This is part two of the ultimate drift cart. Normally drift carts have powered back wheels with less grip so that they can slide sideways. But in my case I'm using an omni wheel on the back which is like a normal wheel but has lots of longboard wheels around its circumference. That means it can be powered to drift the cart sideways but drive forwards and backwards under power from the front wheels. The back wheel was originally made for the balancing omni wheel bicycle project which you can check out in my channel. The front wheels are 10 inch hoverboard wheels which have motors built into the hubs, so this makes building a front wheel drive with steering a lot easier. Last time I got most of the chassis together including the steering assembly and I got the omni wheel mounted on the back along with a motor and belt reduction gearbox to drive it. Altogether it looked pretty good and I think it's going to drift around just fine and under power which should make it super controllable. This time we need to get the steering column built but before that I need to put the seat on so I can get the handlebars in the right place and work out what angle I need the steering column to be at. So with two rails attached and the seat attached for me to sit on I can put my feet up and grab a stick which is going to make up the steering column and then I can work out what angle it needs to be at to mount the steering wheel. I need something to support that steering column which I can mount some bearing blocks on so I've got another piece of steel which is 25 by 25 and I'm just pre-drilling the holes so it's easier when I've welded it on. I need a cross brace across the chassis here as well to mount a V-piece on so that we can make basically a little pyramid with three sides to hold the steering column and hold the steering wheel. And that piece looks like this, which is basically that piece of 25-25 that I drilled holes in mounted at an angle and then it's supported with two pieces on each side which I need to cut and I've cut those out of strips of steel. Although it's quite bendy when they're long, they're actually quite rigid when you cut short sections so that should be more than strong enough. And then we can put one of those each side and that completes our three sided pyramid to hold the steering column and hold the steering wheel. The bearing blocks themselves are fairly complex geometry because we need to seat a bearing in there and clamp them onto that piece of 2525 so I'm 3D printing those with a 1.2mm nozzle. So just a quick ad for my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. There are quite a few 3D printed parts in this project including these knobs for the steering wheel we're going to mount the throttle on and we'll look at that in a minute. The steering wheel or handlebars as they really are are also printed with the 1.2mm nozzle and these are just PLA parts which should be tough enough. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects so check out my channel for more 3D printed projects and check out 3dfuel.com. Each of those bearing blocks fits onto that steering column mount and each one can be bolted through with a 6mm bolt. I actually used a finer nozzle to print the tolerance part for the bearing to fit and so we've got a bearing with a bushing fitted onto each of those and that allows the actual steering column to fit in there which is a 20mm steel tube. There's a clamp on each one, top and bottom to stop that falling out which is another 3D print with an M4 bolt through. I made another metal piece which has got a 20mm collar clamp on one end that can be tightened up on that tube and a 10mm hole in the other end and that fits onto the bottom of the steering column with a 10mm bolt through so that we can put the joints in with the levers that actually push the wheels and these are 10mm rose joints and that means as I turn the steering column our steering moves and the wheels point in the right direction. The handlebars are fixed on in a similar way with another collar clamp and a piece of metal with two bolts through the 3D print so that that will fix on and it won't come off with any luck. So now if I sit on it I can put my feet up 
and I can turn the wheels and that seems to work perfectly well with the load of me on. And I get quite a good range of flexibility there so that I can steer left and right and of course it seems to run fine when I push it along as well. And not forgetting we've got that drift wheel. And of course the plan is that we'll be able to drive and steer with our front wheels which are those powered hoverboard motors and we'll also be able to drift the back wheel under power and under control as we wish to. So, so far it seems to move around pretty flexibly and with all of that we've got quite a tight turning circle. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is KiwiCo. KiwiCo is defining the future of play by making it engaging, enriching and seriously fun. KiwiCo have super cool hands-on projects and activities designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM. That's science, technology, engineering, art and maths. And they're a great resource for learning at home. Each monthly crate is designed by experts and tested by kids. More than a thousand hours go into developing every single crate. KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines, each catering for different age groups and topics, from toddlers to teens and even adults. I built the Crawling Robot Kit. It was convenient because everything is included that you need, with detailed kid-friendly instructions and an educational magazine. KiwiCo crates are a great resource for learning at home. There's hours of entertainment for curious minds. Kids can learn something new every month. KiwiCo crates offer a wide variety of topics from month to month. To support my channel, click on the link in the description below to get 50% off your first month of any KiwiCo subscription. There's quite a few more parts to mount, including the batteries and electronics, so I've added two plywood plates which are screwed to the chassis with self-tapping screws. And that makes the chassis a bit longer as well, so that I've got somewhere to put my feet and my legs aren't so bent. I found this pedal on Amazon, which is basically for e-bikes and ATVs apparently, which has a Hall Effect sensor in, and that's just a normal accelerator pedal, and that's going to drive the vehicle forward. On the handlebars, I've got two e-bike twist grips, and that's going to be the controls for drifting left and right. So that should work pretty well. Each front wheel's got its own brushless motor driver, which as I mentioned last time are Flipsky VESC clones. We need to mix the three accelerators together, so I've got an Arduino Uno in a box, and on top of it is a switch for reversing. And the whole thing is powered from lots of LiPo batteries, we've got one for each motor at the front, and one for the motor at the back, as well as an emergency stop. So it drives like a normal car with the front wheel drive and it's got a pretty tight turning circle as it is. So I can just about drive around in the workshop although it's too fast to be safe really. And we've also got the back wheel which we can run sideways by using those paddles on the handlebar to give us an even tighter turning circle. So it feels fairly terrifying that back wheel's quite powerful with the 20 to 1 because we've got quite a lot of torque from that 1500 watt brushless motor. And what we want to achieve ideally by drifting is steering with opposite lock, which means, for instance, steering right but drifting the back of the car right faster so you actually turn left even though the front wheels are pointed right. But we're going to need more space for that.
So pretty happy I managed to get my opposite lock on and drift by steering right and drifting right and therefore turning left, which is the main thing that I wanted to do with this. It's a bit unstable though with that single back wheel, perhaps a better design would be to have two of those drift wheels at the back so that it's much more stable so we have four wheels in total. But I can drift backwards which you can't do on a normal drift cart as far as I'm aware so that's pretty good but again going backwards and stopping with that single back wheel makes it a little bit unstable. Anyway pretty happy with that I'm going to publish all the CAD and code so if you want to build something like it you can and you can see how I mix those throttles together all of that's on my github page. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description below as well and YouTube channel members and patrons can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be involved in that discussion. That's all for now.